Okay, uh, and you're recording. Yep. Great. So, um, so, <laughs> all right, so continuing on visualization of structural variance. Um, I guess this is reviewed from the previous module, right? There, there are many different complementary approaches to identifying uh, structural variance, as uh, Aaron covered in, in great detail. So uh, we have depth of coverage, but read mapping, paired end mapping. Uh, so the one we're going to focus on uh, visualizing is uh, this paired end mapping approach. So I'd like to keep this a little bit interactive. So here we have a donor, uh, a donor which has a small insertion with respect to the reference. So who could tell me? Um, what the reference genome would look like in the schematic when we map the reads to it. Straight blue line. Sorry? Straight blue line. Straight, straight blue line, but what happens to that, that uh, paired end mapping in the middle? What are the characteristics of that? So this, this paired end mapping, or this paired end sequence, when we map that pair to the reference genome, what what are the characteristics of that? They're a bit closer together, right? So, right? This is how they would look if those pairs were mapped to the reference. In the case where we have a large insertion where the pairs don't span the insertion, what happens now? Sorry? You'll have one unpaired, at right? So, so the ones that overhang this, we won't be able to wrap this in. And we essentially get a breakpoint where we have no pairs which map over the breakpoint. Okay. The case, and you guys have these schematics in, in your uh, in your notes for reference. In the case of a deletion, you've seen this, so I think you you are getting at what that would look like. Um, so here, no matter what size the deletion is, we actually have a paired end which spans completely. Are these okay with everyone? Okay. It's really important to get these uh, in your mind, and then when you see them in, in the genome browser, uh, we tried to make the representation of kind of one-to-one -one mapping with these pictures. What's going to happen in the case of an inversion? So you're going to see a crisscross. Tandem duplications. So if, if there was only one uh, red portion in the original reference genome, but then we have two copies, and we map those pairs, we're going to see that um, pairs which span that, that break point but we're also going to get the regular pairs that map to the middle are going to map appropriately. But this can be twice as many. So the issue that, that we had, we actually formally did a lot of work in our lab on structural variants. And in, in visualizing these in IGV, we came across a, a number of issues. But it gets really complicated when you're looking at heterozygous. Yep, question. Um, if you go back, the yellow one is reversed. Yeah. Is this really going to be the biggest type gene in the universe as well? It's so on the previous slide where you had the arrow. This one? Yeah, so the one in the middle shouldn't be reversed as well. Yes, but the relative orientation of the reads which they map, I think. Oh. Should be okay. Yeah. So here we're here we're coloring the reads with respect to how they are in relation to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Great point. Okay. So when you look at a heterozygous uh, structural variant in in IGV, the problem is that you're going to get a mixing of of normal and not normal uh, pairs. 
So we came up with this representation in Savant um, that, that's a little bit different. It's called uh, arc mode, and it's specialized for trying to identify structural variants with this paired end mapping technology. So the key features of this is that um, in this mode, Savant will draw an arc where the height of the arc represents how far apart the reads map to each other. Okay, so not only is it going to be scaled horizontally, but we're going to draw the arc bigger if it maps further apart. And we're also going to color um, these arcs based on the relative orientation, as we were just talking about. So um, the, the, the representations look something like this, where here we have uh, paired end mappings which are, are very far apart, um, and so they're scaled vertically, and we also color them because they're discordant. clear? So you guys are going to do much the same thing in, in the lab that we've prepared for you, but now in Savant. Uh, we've prepared a list of uh, structural variants that we just downloaded from the web um, uh, using a similar technology like Lumpy that have been called for, for the patient that you're looking at or the individual that you're looking at in 1,000 genomes. Um, and I guess your task is just to go through uh, these examples, learn the signatures, what's a deletion, what's an insertion, tandem duplication, um, and, and just learn what these pictures look at so that the next time you see that, you immediately say, oh, that's a deletion. And then we'll have a, a small quiz. Okay, so thanks for bearing with uh, some slowness. Hopefully you guys had a chance to, to look at, at uh, paired end mappings in a way that is a little bit more intuitive, we think. So uh, just to review, what, what, do you, what does this image represent? I think I heard it, but it was a whisper. You guys have the cheat notes, too. <laughs> Okay, so this is a, a case of an insertion. It's, uh, and this, these breakpoints are a little bit fuzzy, but... Um, Notice we have, there's a rough breakpoint here. This is probably the most complex of the region. And there's not many uh, pairs that span that breakpoint. Okay, you can cheat for this one if you want. What, what is this event? Uh, deletion? Okay, what, what kind? Like, uh, what's the zygosity? Homozygous, right. I think I have a question about that here. What does what a heterozygous deletion look like? This is where it gets tricky, right? Okay, so it, it, it looks kind of like the, this image, but what, what are the differences, I guess, between this image and what a heterozygous deletion would look like? Um, shouldn't be. Yes, yeah, so, so you will see a combination of big arcs and little arcs, and the density of little arcs will be approximately half of what's shown outside, right? So uh, we have an example here, which it's a little bit hard to see the density, but uh, hopefully you can kind of see through it that in the middle there's, there's much less density than outside. And then you have more interesting uh, events which require uh, interpretation, obviously. But you can have fun with that. Okay, so I wanted to talk really quickly. I don't know how much time do we have left? 20 minutes? Okay. Um, yeah, let's, let's uh, talk really quickly about how we could take a step further now and do interactive variant analysis. So. Uh, going back to your question, what's the difference between Savant and MedSavant? We, we, in our collaboration with people at TCAG and uh, sick kids, we there's a problem that finding disease-causing genetic mutations is is very difficult. You have uh, a lot of variants that um, 
might look interesting, but they're caused by errors in your sequencing or variant prediction pipeline. Um, and some of them are actually not related to the phenotype or disease that you're studying. So some people throw up their hands and say, this is like trying to find a needle in a needle stack. Um, so we tried to create a solution, um, and I think these more of these solutions are going to be coming day by day, um, that try to make the process of doing this a lot more interactive and fast. Um, so we wanted to create a platform that uh, allows you to filter your variants based on these metrics of quality, what's the functional effect of the variant, what's the relevant to my disease, um, and to kind of capture all these processes that we've been talking about over the last two days. So doing variant calling, annotation with things like NFR, uh, doing filtration based on those metrics, and then visualization. Um, so we've talked again about uh, all these processes and various modules. Um, and we've used a number of different tools to do it. And so uh, I hope you guys recognize that the command line is super, super powerful uh, and flexible. But uh, unfortunately, it's not as interactive as things like Microsoft Excel or the Genome Browser, which is what some, some geneticists prefer to, to operate in. Uh, and so it's nice to have these interactive tools like genome browsers, but I think we're back in the era of the you know, mid-1990s where you know, an analogy is surfing the web where you had to type in www.yahoo.com to go to some place that's interesting for you. Right? And so I think that's the state of genome browsers where you're copying and pasting genomic coordinates in order to get someplace interesting. So uh, it'd be nice to have a tool that kind of combines uh, the power of the command line uh, with something like Excel. You have a spreadsheet of variants that you're interested in and being able to really quickly um, go in between a spreadsheet and a genome browser visualization. So that's what we tried to do with Medsavant. Um, and there are a number of other tools that exist within the space that are, again, coming up all the time. Uh, and I should mention that, that, that Gemini uh, is something that Aaron Quinlan, uh, who's uh, expert in, uh, and this is his tool, uh, it, it, it lies in the same space, uh, allowing you uh, for a language to be able to specify filters based on your variants. Um, so I recommend you, you try out these tools as well, so Gemini, Varsifter, and Golden Helix, and there's a slew of commercial tools that are available if you're willing to pay for them. Uh, so now there's there's uh, also a lab on MedSavant, which is again a derivative of Savant. Uh, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so once you get loaded up in uh, MedSavant, this is a, kind of the variant navigation interface. And actually, let me step out. Uh, it's basically, it's based on the idea of having apps, uh, and so we're trying to work with collaborators to tell us what apps that, that uh, people prefer. But essentially, there, there's various apps for you know, uploading your BCF files, performing annotations, um, doing patient analysis. Here we have an app which does Mendelian inheritance analysis. Uh, we're doing a collaboration with Google Genomics, which will allow you to access read alignments for, that are stored on the cloud through, through Google. Um, and there's more uh, clinical workflow apps in discovery. And so we have a little app store which allows you to you know, publish your latest algorithm and, and download it for use as well. Um, so for VCF upload, what you just basically drag and drop a VCF file and uh, a pre-configured set of annotations will be applied like Anovar. So you could actually apply any annotation that uh, you could apply through Anovar um, will happen in the background upon uploading this VCF file. And then those variants will be accessible to you through this variant navigator. Um, and if I pull up the list of columns, you can see these are all the columns um, that have been attached to the variants. So we have allele frequencies, everything that's in the VCF file, but also annotations like um, these actually come from Polyfem, dbSNP, ClinVar, 1000 Genomes, etc., etc. And we can now construct search criteria based on all of these facets of the data. So if I wanted, um, let's create a filter based on the frequency for 1,000 genomes. I think it's annotation frequency. And we only want low frequency variants. Okay, so just by configuring those widgets, uh, which are graphical, you could basically filter down your variants. Now, this is kind of like shopping on eBay. 
because you, know, you specify you know, what you're looking for on the left and, and you show the list of the results on the right. Uh, and through an interface um, that's shown on the right side, we can now uh, navigate to the position on, on the, in the genome browser as well. I mean, our servers are under fire right now, but um, that's the idea.